Hey guys, what's going on? I am here with my good friend, colleague, Ryan Patient. And we're going to go over a couple things that we see in the credit markets and the lending markets. Uh, basically, where interest rates go, right? So give you guys a little bit of context. I mean, Ryan, introduce yourself, give them a little bit of background on you, and then we'll get going. Yeah, my name is Ryan. I work in unsecured loans, term loans, whatever you want to really call them. Uh, specializes in uh, credit and an income or revenue based. Um, so this is something I've been around for a long, long time. And yeah, it's just something that we were actually talking about earlier today. And I think it just it brought up a good uh, a good topic that we could really probably spend a lot of time on. Yeah, so here's here's kind of where we are. Our government decides to print a lot of money send a lot of it overseas, do all these crazy things like uh, PPP, EIDL, tax credits. And so when you print and print and print, the money is worth less. And so what that does is it drives up the interest rates, okay? If you look back six months ago when we were doing SBA loans, it was prime plus 375 and people were getting loans in like the six and sevens, right? Today, they're between 10 and 11. They adjust quarterly. When you look at mortgage rates, mortgage rates were at, you know, in the threes. Now they're at the, in between seven and 8%. All right. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about the unsecured stuff. What, what, what have you seen? I mean, I've seen nothing but increases. So uh, I would say probably within the last three months, we've seen rates as low as like 6.9%. Every once in a while, we would see like a 5%. But I mean, as of right now, on average, it was between, I would say, between like 10 and 15%. Right now, if I see a 15% interest rate, uh, that's, a, that's a low rate. So what we're seeing right now is usually between 15 to 22%, and it's only going to get higher. Because what people don't realize or don't, don't think of, they think, oh, well, the Fed raised the, the interest rate by 0.75. Uh, it's not going to affect me that much. Well, no. What it does is when they raise it by 0.75, the banks are going to double that or sometimes even triple it just to make sure that they're making the same money that they, they, they could have made before. Yeah. So, for example, a month ago, Prime was at three and a quarter. It's at four now, and it's going to go up again next month. And they're anticipating four to five different increases in 2023 because they've got a hezzy inflation somehow. Right. They can't yeah. just keep giving away this free money. It's it's going to be a serious thing. And, you know, the with our types of loans. Since about 2009, 2010, people have been used to these super low rates, like 5 6 7%. We're just not going to see that. I mean, I would say we're probably two or three years, not to be all doom and gloom, but we're like two or three years out from seeing any type of breaks and getting back into the single digits on a, on a you know, consistent basis. Yeah, and so with that, that doesn't mean that people should cancel growth. It doesn't mean people should, should stop making wise decisions that – you know, are going to help their business. At the end of the day, everybody wants the best deal possible. But that, at the end of the day, you have to evaluate, does the cost of the money outweigh the return on investment of investing in this piece of equipment or starting this business, right? So you have to look at cost versus what that money is going to allow you to bring in. And then you have to look at What's the payment of the financing versus how much cash flow is this going to bring in? And the reason I'm telling you guys that is people don't understand. Like when I go and I buy a, a real estate, pro, you know, a, a rental property, I'm buying that rental property and I'm paying a much higher rate than normal. I think I'm closing on one. It's going to be like nine or 10% interest only. And then when we do a no doc refi, it'll be at 8%. That's unfortunate, but that's just the market. What I'm looking at is, all right, I'm buying a house for 400000 It's probably worth five fifty. That It's probably going to cost me about $3,000 a month, and it'll bring in 4500 and rent a month. So do I throw out everything and say I don't want to do it because I don't want to pay those rates? Or do I pay the $3,000 a month payment, collect the $1,500 you know, in profit on a monthly basis, and have the note paid down? Right. Think about that. Yes, I'm paying a higher rate. Yes, I'm paying 
you know, above what I want to pay. However, it's still going to bring me in an extra $1,500 a month that I wouldn't otherwise have had. All right. So that's how you have to analyze all these decisions. And I think like Ryan, what are some of the best things you think people can do today to put themselves in the best position possible to win over the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah. I mean, I think you just nailed it on the head right there. So what you have to do is you have to analyze. So let's just say, for example, you've got $20,000 worth of credit card debt, right? Um, you're paying like 18 to 25% interest on that. So you, the difference between credit card interest and, you know, like these types of loans, credit card is compound where they calculate that interest daily and that interest gets stacked on the, the balance of the, the card and you gain, you pay interest rather on the interest accrued from the day before. So let's just say on a $10,000 credit card, you know, your minimum payment is $200 a month, about $175 of that is going just towards the interest. So that's why, you know, when you're making those payments, uh, it doesn't feel like you're moving anywhere because you're really not. It's going to take you 20 years to pay that credit card off versus one of these loans. Let's say you get approved for a, a $10,000 loan at 18% simple interest um, and the payment is, you know, 225 a month. What's the difference? Obviously, there's there's a little bit of a higher payment. But guess what? In 60 payments or five years, you're going to have that loan paid off uh, versus with a credit card in five years you're probably going to be about still about $8,000 worth of credit card debt. That's really what it comes down to. And I think what you have to do is, you know, focus on the growth of your business and, and understand that as you continue to scale through these tough times, your return may not be as much as you want it to be or as much as it could have been two years ago, but you are still making a return. And you have to invest in yourself and you have to invest in your business in order to make that happen. Otherwise, you're going to get stagnant or you're going to start regressing. And the moment you start slipping, you're, you're going to start losing uh, ground. And once you start losing ground, somebody else that's more aggressive is going to come in and they're going to take your place. And that's really just that's, what that's I see reality. happening. That's the reality, right? And I'll give you guys a couple things you could focus on right now to shore up your business, shore up your personal so first off, work on your credit. Make sure your credit is as high as humanly possible, okay? Uh, you can do it, consolidate credit card debt, like Ryan said, make sure your credit's strong. Make sure your business credit's strong. I personally would make sure I have a ton of cash uh, available, right, to protect your business, to get in uh, and to take advantage of some of the opportunities that are gonna present themselves. The other thing I think is super important is not just having a lot of cash, but having access to a lot of cash. So what a lot of my friends are doing, what a lot of my clients are doing, getting them an SBA loan, shore up everything in their business and then getting them a line of credit. Those two things, having the cash, having access to cash are huge. And if you own a business, the other things you should be doing, focus on your content. Focus on client experience. Make sure that you make every single client a raving fan. Because what that's going to do is it's going to turn one client into two, two into four, four into eight. All right. It's predictable and it's something that you absolutely control. Do those things over the course of this time. Don't pull back, but be wise in the decisions you make and where you allocate your resources, your time, your money. Okay. And doing those things will allow you to come out ahead over the next 12 to 24 months. Ryan, do you have anything else, brother? I mean, that's pretty much it. You nailed everything again. Just make sure you pay your bills on time. Set your credit cards up on auto pay. All, all your bills get paid. Don't miss any payments. That's like 30 per 30 to 35% of your credit credit score. So make sure all that's taken care of and just continue to stack stack cash really cool uh, but hey thanks for joining us enjoy date night all right you know it <laughs> uh, and uh, guys i'll be on live tomorrow for financial fitness friday appreciate all of you and uh we will catch you on the next one if we can do anything to help you please reach out i mean that please reach out that's why we're here